Hi, today on the workbench I have a Cycle Embed 100 Amp Hours Mini Lithium Ion Phosphate Battery. It was sent in for me to do a review. I will leave a link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. The first thing caught my eye is just how small this battery is compared to the other 100 Amp Hour batteries. Here I had done some comparison earlier, putting the Cycle Embed and Lead Time 100 Amp Hour batteries side by side, and you can see just how much smaller the Cycle Embed battery is. The lead time battery I have here is a Group 31 battery. By comparison, you can see that the Cycle Embed is smaller in every dimension. It's 10 cm narrower than the lead time lengthwise, 2.5 cm less in depth, and even a few millimeters shorter. In fact, if I put it side by side with a 50 amp hour battery, you can see that it's actually not a much bigger. For my personal use, the size of the battery is not that critical. But if you have limited space and need many of these batteries in a large battery bank, the smaller size of these mini batteries will obviously make a big difference in terms of space saving. And let's take a look at the product manual. And here we have the manual. And you can see that it claims it is using grade A cells. Quite a few of YouTubers have done teardown videos of this battery, and the build quality seems to be quite decent. Of course, it claims to have a cycle life of more than 5,000 times. Of course, I have no way of verifying this without having to do extensive cycle testing, but at 80% depth of discharge, good quality LFP batteries can easily exceed this many cycles. It is impossible for me to predict the long-term degradation and reliability of this battery, but like other batteries I have, I will be cycling through the battery regularly, and I will definitely let you know if I run into any issues. Let's take a look at what else. The battery has low temperature charge and discharge protection built in, which is excellent. Some batteries only have low temperature charging protection. Now, LFP batteries can be safely discharged in lower temperatures, but the capacity is significantly reduced, so having a low temperature discharge protection definitely helps. And you can see that the manual is clearly designed for customers in the United States, as the temperatures printed here are in Fahrenheit. Here we have more general information about the battery. You can see some of the parameters here. And you see here, the maximum continuous charge and discharge current is specified at 100 amps. And that's actually fairly standard for batteries of this size. And here the peak discharge current is specified at 300 amps for 5 seconds. I think there's a typo here. You can see here it says overcharge protection 14.6 amps. And this really is the overcharge voltage protection should be 14.6 volts. And the overcurrent protection is actually quite high at 360 amps. I don't know if I have the right equipment to be able to test that. And here we have more information on charging the battery using a standard charger or a solar panel. And here we have the voltage versus SOC characteristics. And just like most of the LFP batteries, you can connect up to four of them in parallel and four of them in series. Now here is something interesting. You can see that you cannot put the battery leaning forward or on its face. This restriction might feel odd at first, but if you watch the teardown of this battery other YouTubers had already done, you will see that the reason is because the prismatic cells are actually mounted sideways inside the battery casing, meaning that the top of the cell is actually on this side of the battery, and if you lay the battery this way, lean it forward or face down, the cells would be actually upside down inside. And then we, let's see, we have the battery storage information and some of the inverter settings, and that's pretty much everything in this product manual. And by the way, I probably won't be doing a teardown today because the cells are actually glued onto the case, and there's very little room around the cells to work with. So without special tools, I won't be able to take the cells out and take a look at the top side of the battery, which is on the front side. And here we have the warranty card. You can see that it says we have 7 years warranty, not sure if you can read that, but it's actually a little bit confusing here, as it says 7 years 5 warranty. I'm actually not sure what that 5 warranty means. Perhaps it means you have 5 claims? I don't know. Anyway, if any of you have had any issues within the warranty period, and you have done warranty claims, please leave a comment below and let me know what your experience was. Now, this is something interesting. I don't think I've seen this before. You can see we have a card from Cycle and Bat, greetings from Brent. And inside you will see they invite you to write your review. And if you leave a positive rating, you can see here, they will get you a new battery. And by the look of it, if you write a positive review, they also will give you a 50% discount on your next purchase. That is very interesting. Hmm. 
That's why I actually don't trust Amazon reviews most of the time, as sometimes the ratings are inflated because of this practice. But that's why we test products on this channel. Anyway, I charge out the battery earlier using 0.2C or 20 amps until 14.6 volts, and held it there for a few hours to ensure the cells within the battery are properly balanced. I then did a 0.1C or 10 amps discharging test using my electronic load. LFP battery capacities are not really affected by discharge rate, so the measured results should be indicative. During discharging, I set the terminal voltage to 9.5 volts on the electronic load side. In practice, there's probably a 0.8 volt voltage drop across these leads, so the battery was discharged to roughly 10.3 volts. Towards the end of the discharging cycle though, the battery voltage drops pretty fast, so even if I lower the cutoff voltage, it won't impact the overall capacity by much. And the measured results here you can see is just over 101.8 amp hours. Now that exceeds the specified capacity rating, but not by much. You can also see here during charging and discharging the battery stayed cool, which is to be expected at these relatively low current levels. After the discharging test, I charge up the battery again. Now before we do anything else, let's actually take a look at the internal resistance. For this test, let me grab my internal resistance meter, the HRM10. So I think I need to hook it up securely. And you can see the measured internal resistance. Actually, let me just tighten it down. It's actually quite low. It's right around 4 milliohms. The measurement, of course, is very sensitive. Now I just wiggled around the leads, and you can see we're actually able to get down to 3.6 milliohms. That resistance actually is very low for a battery like this. So now let's take a look at the maximum current. The rated maximum current is 100 amps, and let's actually test that using some electric heaters. Now for the setup, I have two heaters hooked up to the output of the Variac. I'm using a Variac to adjust the output voltage so I can control the load precisely. Okay, let me power it on. And turn on the Variac. Let me dial up the voltage. So obviously now we're above 100 amps. Remember, the radiant maximum current is at 100 amps. So let's let it run for a few minutes and see if we have any issues. The warning you heard actually is from the inverter, not the battery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the load a little bit and just let it run continuously at 100 amps. And this has been running for a few minutes now. Obviously, you can see that everything is still working. There's no problem at all. For the next test, I want you to take a look at the maximum discharge current. The peak current is rated at 300 amps for 5 seconds. So the battery should definitely be more than capable to power the heater continuously and be able to start my electric drill simultaneously. If you recall, as I have measured in some of my previous videos, the startup current for the electric drill, and this is the drill I'll be using, and the inrush current when the drill starts is right around 160 to 170 amps. So let's give that a go. I'm going to hook up the drill. By the way, I'll just warn you that the drill will be a little bit loud. Let me actually turn on the inverter first. Okay. 
And I will start the heater here first. So we'll draw 100 amps. And I'm going to count to three and start the drill. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you can see that there's no problem at all. So the peak current during that test was probably right around 260 to 270 amps, which is still obviously within the maximum rated current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another load to the battery and we'll do the test again. All right, so for this test, what I did is I actually added another electronic load to connect to the battery and I will be drawing 30 amps from the electronic load. And adding that on top of the 100 amps draw from the heater and also the drill startup current, it should put it right over 300 amps. Let's give that a go. Let's first set the current to 100 amps with the heater. And now let me turn on the electronic load. So you can see we're drawing 140 amps. And now I'm trying to start the electric drill. And uh, let's do it again. No problem. I will let this run for a few minutes and also take a look at thermal signature at 150 amps. And from this test, you can see that the battery is definitely quite capable. From my testing today, this Cycle Embed 100 amp hour LFP battery performed really well. It met its 100 amp hour capacity rating, and we were able to confirm that it can handle the maximum current with no problem. I'll be using this battery regularly, and I will definitely report back if I find any issues in the long term. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.